Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. Saved from uncleanness is the title of this devotion. You know, leprosy in the both Old and New Testament, but especially in the Gospels. Leprosy was a sign in the Old Testament. Naaman in the Old Testament was a leper, well known. Naaman, the commander of the armies of Assyria, and uh, with its capital Nineveh. And he was a leper that came to the prophet Elijah, or Elisha, I think it was Elisha, and had to dip seven times in the Jordan and come up clean. Well, leprosy throughout scripture has always been a, a signal of the nature of sin within human flesh. You see, leprosy will cause your, your flesh to die in its ability to perceive any damage to it, any reproach to it, any harm to it. So somebody who has leprosy, you can cut them and they can't feel it. There's no feeling there because everything has died and it begins to rot the flesh and that is what invites bacteria and, and therefore somebody becomes extremely contagious because they're unclean. People that were lepers had to cry out when others came around, unclean, unclean. And that's why the leper who came to Jesus said, you can make me clean. And Jesus has come to cleanse us from sin. Unto you is born this day in the city of David, a save a city of David, a savior who will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means savior. Saving is cleansed. The Bible says in Titus 3, we are saved by the cleansing, by the washing of being made new inwardly by his spirit. So you see, God wants us to be clean, clean, safe from uncleanness. All sin has in its nature the stench of death, of self, of uncleanness. You see, self in, to, in comparison to God is unclean. Remember how Isaiah in chapter 6 of Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord as he was praying in the temple and then and then he heard the seraphim singing and shouting around the throne, holy, 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 the thrice holy, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, holy. And then he says, I'm undone, I am a stranger, I feel unclean compared to this holiness. And that would be true for any of us who would experience the holiness of God without Christ. We would all feel unclean even if we had done nothing necessarily that we would perceive as wrong. The very nature of sin is unclean. So listen to this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 through 7. But fornication, that's the word pornography, and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for the saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, making little jokes with a sexual undertone in it, that's coarse jesting, yes, which are not fitting, but rather let us give thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be takers with them. We should not share in that kind of environment and there should be no level of it in any form or fashion in us. It should not be named among us. It should not be part of our social mindset. And, and I know people can be sometimes a bit stupid because they watch some program on TV and then they talk about it, but it has, it's, it's unclean and it's unholy. The Bible says, touch no unclean thing and I shall be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, I think. 
touch no unclean thing. Folks, the Lord wants us to be clean. That's why he saves us from uncleanness. He washes us in his blood because we're unclean. We're defiled in our conscience, in our heart. When you live in the holiness of the spirit, free from the corruption that's in the world through lust, and you live in that communion with the Father and there's nothing undermining it because of the consistency of His Spirit upholding you and your devotion in it, and then you yield yourself to something unclean, it begins to communicate with your conscience what you saw, what you heard. And it tries to blind you to the conscious knowledge of that holy life, of that heavenly life. And you feel it within you and it connects with you. That's why I don't want to know it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, Ephesians 5 verse 8. Yes, I used to be unclean. I used to con feel those things, see those things, and, and it would try to c communicate with me all the time because it lived in me. But Jesus has cleansed me in his precious blood and washed me whiter than snow, and now it cannot penetrate that power of his blood. And it can connect with me, communicate with me. You may say, oh, Come on, Pastor, be real. We're living in a world where women dress themselves, and I'm talking as men, women dress themselves in a way that, 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 yeah, I understand. No, no, I understand. I, I, I've had those thoughts. I've been, I've been young. <laughs> and it hasn't actually got anything to do with being young. I, I know those thoughts. But I'm so grateful not to live there anymore, and I can't bear to go there. Oh, and if it tries to touch me at any time, I instantly run into that heavenly shower of the washing of regeneration. I actually live in that shower day and night. I run into that cleansing flood of the blood that flows from my manual's veins for sinners plunged beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Guilty stains mean that, that what is in you connects with that uncleanness in the world. But if the stain is gone, it doesn't connect anymore. And the world can't connect with you. You from within by the spirit of life in Christ shun the uncleanness. And by the spirit of life, you draw in that holiness. You connect with it. And you can be talking with somebody who maybe struggles with certain weaknesses of the flesh, but when they're talking with you, all they can feel is the life and the love of Jesus Christ and that carnal part, that fleshly part, that human part is covered by the light of fellowship. All oh, that is so real, so powerfully, gloriously real. What it says right here in verse 6, if we say we have, First uh, John 1 verse 6, if we say we have fellowship with him, with the Lord, and walk in darkness, we lie, we don't practice the truth. But if we walk if we walk in the light as he is in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This is why I say it often, the church is one big Holy Ghost washing machine. You come into the church, that's why we shouldn't neglect the gathering of the saints together. You come into the church and you come among us and that fellowship we have with one another in Christ and in the Father is a cleansing flood and you just get cleansed and cleansed but just being in that fellowship by the power of the blood that is manifest in the life of the Spirit and in us. Folks, without the blood of Jesus being sprinkled on the throne of heaven, on the mercy seat in heaven upon which Christ reigns and through which Christ reigns. That mercy seat is his living dominion and power. Without the blood there, that could not reach us here. But because the blood is there, his spirit life is here. And it's able to come for the ones for which it was shed. The blood was shed for me and for you. I feel the Holy Ghost saying to you, come on, look at the cross where the blood was shed for you. Look at the cross where the blood was shed for you. 
and he will wash you white as snow. He'll remove every stain of sin, no matter how deeply stained you are, and no matter how much the demons keep bringing to you the thoughts of uncleanness, the thoughts of unholiness, the thoughts of ungodliness, Jesus will cut their access to you by cleansing you white as snow. The Lord says, come on then. In Isaiah 1 verse 18, let's talk this over. Even if you are stained as red as crimson, I will wash you white as snow. David says, cleanse me with hyssop, O Lord, and I will be whiter than the snow. Hyssop was a plant that has healing powers in, in the plant. And they would dip it in water and sprinkle that water through that plant on you as in you're being healed from what wounded you and you're being cleansed from what defiled you, what corrupted you. O manna so I know when you feel so ashamed, when you feel so condemned and guilty, and you know, you know, oh Lord, Lord, please, I hate these feelings of sin. I hate these feelings of shame and guilt. And the devil tells you, oh, nobody loves you. Everybody knows what you've done wrong. There's no more hope for you. The devil's so cruel and so mean. He wants to drag you to hell with him. But Jesus is going to take you up to heaven with him. All you have to do is look to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my sin was rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am no longer the same. Oh, it's so wonderful when you realize Jesus was crucified for our offenses and raised for our justification. He shed his blood to remove the deepest stain of guilt and shame, to wash you clean and make you white as snow. So all those unclean thoughts out there and all these unclean images out there, they don't communicate. They're still there, but they don't communicate. And there could be a poster of something unclean on the wall where you work, but you don't look at it. And it doesn't call you anymore. And inside of you, you don't kind of go, no, I don't want to look at it. No, you just don't even look at it. You're dead to it. That's the power of the blood. It makes you dead to sin, but alive to God. Because Jesus is the embodiment, is the minister of that blood. And he will not fail to administer to you. And he says, when we live in this fellowship, the church needs to live in this. The blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. He removes the deepest stain of guilt. Oh, I'm so happy I believe all this. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. I'm going to read it to you from the Living Bible. Do you want more and more of God's kindness and peace? Then learn to know Him better and better. For as you know him better, he will give you through his great power everything you need for living a truly good life. He even shares his own glory, his own goodness with us. And by that same mighty power, he has given us all the other rich and wonderful blessings he's promised. For instance, the promise to save us from the lust and rottenness all around us and give us his own character. I promise you, my loving Savior, Jesus Christ is faithful and he will not fail to continuously cleanse you until the deepest stain is gone and that you have no more memory of guilt about it, no more memory of shame, and that the experience you have, you don't revisit willfully. And if it reminds you of it, all you can think, I've been forgiven, I've been washed, I've been cleansed, I am no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God I stand. And the way you look at others will change. And it will open your heart up to have faith and love for the most vilest sinners. And to know that the same love with which you loved, God loves them. And you will tell them, say, hey, you know, I know the pain. 
of where you are because I once was there, but Jesus, he saved me and he keeps saving me every day and he loves you too. And you don't just say it as a religious dogma, but you say it as a life-giving experience that empowers them with the same power by which you now live, that cleansing flood of the blood of the Son of God. Amen. Have a good day.